Mr. Godsey, when you look at the deal, who do you think is the biggest winner? But there are no winners. Uh, it was a, a lose-lose process, and we both lose. It is a damage limitation process. I think that, of course, uh, overall, uh, UK is losing much more than the EU. Uh, but I repeat, we have uh, we have limited the damages uh, coming from uh, the decision of UK to leave the EU. Right, and uh, we still have to ratify this deal. Uh, when is the European Parliament going to put this to a vote? The European Parliament now must look into the deal. As you know, it's a very long document. Um, I think 1,500 1, document all in all. And uh, we will take our time, of course, uh, to, look, to look into that. Uh, I do believe that it could be in February. We are talking about the 8th of February, but the date is uh, it's just being discussed now. It's not fixed yet. Uh, it is clear that, I mean, we, uh, we will have uh, to look uh, specifically into 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 the deal, which I repeat, uh, it looks uh, it looks like a a, a positive deal in an, within a negative context. Right. So, so just to pick up on what you said, because this this does matter, especially for markets and the implications that it may have. What you say is that this is going to be put to a vote. It needs to be ratified, but it will probably not be in January. It's more of a February now situation. Uh -huh. Yes, the, the, I repeat, the date is being discussed, uh, but it's more likely, uh, it looks more likely than the parliament uh, could ratify uh, in the beginning, in the first week, in the first decade, the, the, the 10 days of February, more than in, uh, more than in January. Uh, and uh, you know that it is, a, I understand the interest of the market, but this is a, a, a deal which uh, concerns more uh, trading goods uh, and um, and uh, a movement of uh, of people, uh, you know that the financial services are practically completely excluded from from the deal, and I think that this is a major loss uh, for London. Right, and and as you mentioned, it's hundreds of pages. Uh, have you been given the document? I wonder, and, and what areas specifically do you want to focus on? No, I, I mean, I, I haven't started to look uh, into, into the matter. I'm a member of the Internal Market Committee. It is clear that uh, we will look very carefully into everything affect the good functioning of the internal market. It is clear that uh, the issue of uh, state aid and mutual control on state aid given to European or to British firms, uh, it will be a major issue for us, but also uh, the um, uh, respect and at least a, a certain convergence on environmental and social standard, uh, which is a condition for us uh, to keep our market open uh, to the British firms will also be one of the issues that I will look uh, very carefully into uh, before the final vote of the European Parliament, uh, as I, I think I believe in February. And uh, Mr. Gotzi, when you look at the, the documents and, and the deal itself, it's clear that it's no quotas, no tariffs, but the EU does say there is a right to arbitration and potential tariffs in the future. I wonder how solid is this relationship, however, down the line? No, the, 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 the relation is solid. The relation is solid and um, this deal... Uh, it, it, it has been uh, it, it has it has uh, turned Brexit into radical change, but not a dramatic change uh, in the relationship between EU and UK. And I think that the fact that we got a deal, uh, it's a very positive basis on which we can build up uh, a new partnership between EU and UK, uh, which is totally to invent. After all, it's the first time that we spend almost four years on a trade agreement not to dismantle barriers, but to <laughs> introduce new barriers, new obstacle uh, to trade. It is true, as you say, that uh, we reached uh, uh, what we wanted both uh, in Brussels and in London, an agreement which uh, is based on no tariff and no quota, uh, but there is a lot to shape for the future relationship. In the financial service, for example, you know that the clearing houses are granted for the city uh, only in 2021. Uh, UK doesn't have a financial passport anymore. Uh, there are several issues uh, linked also to security and um, co uh, cooperation on in the field of security. So, I mean, there is a lot to do uh, in the future. I think that Brexit is not gone. I think that uh, it will be a very long process which will keep us busy both in London and Brussels. But I repeat, the fact that there is a deal uh, allows us to start the new phase on a positive basis.
Right. And just as a very final question, you say that Brexit to some extent is not done, but you know very well there's many commentators, especially in Brussels, who say it does signal the end uh, of populism. We have Trump leaving the White House. We have this deal now in place. Would you say this is it for the surge of populism that we saw just take hold in Europe for years? I'd like to say it. I'd like to say it. Certainly, I mean, the worst year uh, for us and the best year for nationalism and populism was 2016. Huh? Brexit, Trump in Italy, we lost the constitutional referendum. The Five Stars movement were uh, raising up uh, the extreme right, post fascist in Italy, uh, Marine Le Pen, all this uh, stuff. Uh, it was uh, mainly in 2016. Now Trump is gone. There is a it, it was a point of reference uh, for all the nationalists and populists in Europe. And without having the American president, it's certainly for them more difficult. But I think the fight against nationalism and populism is still on. Uh, we have uh, to still pay attention. And I think that uh, the recovery plan and all that Europe is doing to, uh, as a response uh, to the COVID-19 crisis, the distribution of vaccine, the major uh, resilience and the recovery facility, the plan of 750 billion euro uh, to uh, relaunch uh, the right. economy in the continent. These are all the right answer to the populists and nationalists, which are weakened, but they are still there. We have to completely defeat them.